everyone, it's Jessica, and today I'm trying something a little bit new. I'm doing a reading style vlog. So instead of my usual dress up, makeup, whole nine yards, you've got me in my comfy clothes, just talking to my camera and reviewing a couple of books I'm reading, what I thought about them, how I found them, that kind of thing. It's February is Black History Month, and for it there were a whole bunch of readathons, but the one that I found first organically is going to be the Black Author Readathon, and I found it through Steph from Steph Romance Talk. She has a video announcing it, but she also has a Black Authors on Kindle Unlimited video, and that's what I found first because a large part of my book budget goes into Kindle Unlimited reading. It just is a smart sell for me. There's a lot of indie authors that I can check out. There's a lot of urban fantasy. There's a ton of paranormal romance. And those are kind of like my genres of choice right now. And especially during this period in time, my anxiety is really high. I thought I could do a little bit more intense reads and it's just not the case right now. I'm still looking for some fluffy escapism. So these sort of lighter hearted reads that you can find as paranormal romance, regular romance, and Kindle Limited is perfect. And I did want to do something for Black History Month. I just didn't know what would work with my anxiety and what I'd be able to find. So this really was very fortuitous. But anyways, I was trying to figure out how I would participate besides watching the host's videos, reading some of their recommendations, rating those recommendations, and I thought I would try this blog style video where I just record my progress and I link to other people's videos and I thought I would post it in early March instead of on the way in February because I really, I want to participate but I don't think it's good for me to lead this conversation. I think my point of view has value, but I don't want to be taking away airtime or space from any black bloggers, black YouTubers, black authors during the month of February. You know, I feel like my contribution can wait um, until those people have had a chance to speak. And then if you're looking for more content beyond their content, I'll have something out in March. And I don't know if anyone's going to see this or if I'm just talking to myself for real in a room right now. But we'll see. Anyways, I started by consuming all the YouTube videos I could and writing a list down, writing a list down of which authors interested me. And that way, this is something I plan to do beyond February. Obviously, I can't, even though I read really fast, I can't read all those authors. Reading diverse voices isn't something you do just for a month, especially not the shortest month of the year. It's something that you commit to doing because you want to do it throughout the entire year. And you just take advantage of the month of February to grab those recommendations while it's relevant. At least that's how I handle it. I am going to make a special effort to read some of these books this year, this month specifically. And I already started this past week, um, weekend. I started with Monique's books list. She has a video, Black Author Recommendation. She's one of the hosts for this Black Author Readathon. And one of the things I loved about Monique's recommendation list is a lot of the stories were on Kindle Unlimited and they were novellas. So if you were just looking to compete in this contest or this bingo card, you could cross a lot off with these different novellas very quickly. But also if you were just getting started into reading um, diverse reads, you, you weren't sure how you felt about it, but you still wanted to try, then this was like a little taste of something. And a lot of these authors who have novellas also have full length novels. So you could sort of sample around, see if you like a writing style and then commit to a longer work. Um, for my purposes, I thought it would be good because I am having trouble with larger commitments. For example, Avery's song has been in my recommendations forever and I'm interested in her story. I didn't even realize that she was a black author until I started going through these YouTube videos her book is 500 pages and even though it's a story that interests me and I want to read it and it's on my list I just can't commit to 500 pages right now it's too intimidating <laughs> I wish I didn't have this anxiety but I do and I just have to work with it so I started off on Monique's book list with hints of spice the way she described this story just sounded like so much fun in fact I would definitely subscribe to both Steph's romance talk and Monique's 
book list. Her cadence on camera is really fun. She's really good at it. She's really good at talking to the camera and I really enjoy listening to her. I enjoy the way she presents everything and her recommendations were very sound, you know? So I would go over to her and <laughs> listen to her. But my experience with Hints of Spice was great. I gave it four or five stars. I can't remember now. It was a really quick read. I read it in like an hour, two hours. I mean, I don't have anything to add. I thought the scenes were spicy. I thought the plot line was really enjoyable. It was like cute and fluffy. It was a lot of fun. It was a feel good read. Uh, if you're looking for that, I would go ahead and recommend Hints of Spice. And Hints of Spice is by Christina C. Jones, just in case I haven't mentioned that. And I'll also be linking to the books in the description below. The next thing I did is I actually searched Amazon Kindle Unlimited when Steph from Steph's Romance Talk did the black authors on Kindle Unlimited, she gave us a ton of recommendations, but she also sort of said that it was really easy to search for these authors and find some in whatever genre you want on your own. And I was like, all right, I know when someone is low-key calling me out and being to being lazy and or incompetent, which in my case, I've never been very successful with searches, so I take it as incompetent. But I wanted to take this moment, especially since some of the authors she had recommended are already popping up in my suggested feed, and see if I could search black authors. I mean, it's February. If I can't find black authors on Kindle Unlimited while I'm intentionally searching in February, I just can't do it. And I did, it took me a while to find something that interested me, but I did find another short story, The Tangled Wood by Emily Reto. It's labeled a horror story. I don't know that I would call it horror. It was very literary to me. And honestly, it was a little too intense for my mood. I kind of forced myself to finish reading it. It's an excellent read. I should say that. It's a really well written, the prose are beautiful, everything is executed perfectly. If I had been in a different mood, this probably would have been a five star story for me. The characters are just really well written, I know where they're coming from, they're traditionally unlikable characters, they have a really strong voice and sense of direction, and they're describing something that a lot of it would have usually been really relatable to me and I would definitely recommend In the Tangled Woods to other people if you're up for a more serious read. And it's like an existential horror, I guess, but it's not like that traditional scary horror. And I was expecting like a little bit more traditional scary horror, I think, too, when I read the book. So those are my two novellas. And then I actually also found Brittany Chantanel, and she has the Gifted Faye Academy series. And I loved that series. I wouldn't usually have even read a series like this because it has the word Academy in it. And I don't usually like school reads. But she was a black author, and I found her in my own search, which I was so proud of doing and succeeding at. And it was great, like, the characters in there are wonderful. I read straight through the night. I would definitely recommend the Gifted Faye Academy series by Brittany Chantanel. I'm gonna read more from her in the future. I'm actually in the middle of the, her third and final book in this series, and I'm taking a little pause from it right now. Um, I probably would have read it straight through that night, but it was four in the morning and I needed to get some sleep. Hey guys, it's Editing Jess, and I just realized I didn't really talk about what I liked or didn't like about Brittany Chantanel's The Fae Academy. It reminded me a lot of like a good old-fashioned anime. In particular, I'm thinking like The Hero Academy. Our main character, she's really bright, she's really positive and sunshiny, she wants to do what's right and what's just for the society around her. And she has a male love interest who's kind of a little bit more complicated and a little bit standoffish and jerky. This is definitely a young adult read and it has perhaps the most effective love triangle I've seen in a long time. They have the guy that she's known for a long time who's kind of a jerk to her but who was once nice to her. And then they have this new guy who whose name is Odin who just seems like perfect and shiny. And I really was into him at first and they managed to turn that around in a natural way so that I started to be less interested in him as a romantic interest and more interested in the more complicated guy as a romantic interest for our lead. And I just liked how they shifted the love triangle that way. It was really effective. It made both men desirable at different points in time for different reasons. 
So overall, I'd say like it's a fun, wholesome high school story with an interesting love triangle, and it's a compelling story about magic and teens with special abilities. The magic system isn't super strong, there are a couple things to me that are really confusing, and it's more like a mutant story, I think, than even a magic story in a lot of ways. Also, they use the word fey really loosely. Fey is like a position held by someone with a special ability as opposed to a magical creature. I was a little teeny tiny disappointed by that because I'm always looking for another fey magical creature sort of story, but overall, Oh, it just had a great dynamic, it was a really easy read, it was a lot of fun. And I really love the main character and I love where that story is going, so I would definitely recommend. People that will be in the description down below for this readathon is going to be Steph Romance Talk, Monique's Book List, Books with Brandy Shea, and the last YouTuber hosting the Black Author Readathon is Reading with Tara. And then someone else I want to mention briefly is Jess Owens, and she actually did like a booktube wrap up. And one of the things that she has right now is a February TBR, her, both her YouTube and that specific video will be linked. And the February TBR actually goes over, I believe, three different Black History Month challenges and a whole bunch of different Black YouTubers that you can go ahead and check out. And I want to give a shout out to them as well. So continuing my journey in my Black Author Readathon. I also found a collection of short stories called Big City Heat, and in it, it features several black authors. Um, the ones that I read were going to be A Change of Plans by P.E. Kavanaugh, Courtney by Jace Ellis, Feeling Wrecked by Stella Williams, Make Me Beg by Moni Boyce, and Global City Trice by Maudie Mabley. And Big City Heat is what is a collection of short stories that are romance based about romances that happen in the big city, I guess. So the hook for me wasn't particularly interesting and I didn't find the same level of chemistry in any of these stories that I found in Hints of Spice. So for me it was like a mediocre reading experience, but as far as overall quality of writing goes, I'd say all of them were really well written. I enjoyed a couple different perspectives, there were some parts that were really well done even if I didn't find anything particularly romantic or drawing about the short stories. I do find these short story collections like this are hard for me to personally read, so take my opinions here with a little bit of a grain of salt. I'm not going to go too far in depth, each one of these stories actually has a small summary in front of it, like a couple of lines, and it is available on Kindle Unlimited, so if you want to check it out, you could look at Big City Heat for it. One thing that I do think that was cool in these reads for me was finding Jace Ellis. They write LGBTQ romance, and I'm always looking for a little bit more LGBTQ romance in my life. Uh, I end up reading a lot of straight couples. Or even like in reverse harems, almost all the couples are one girl and multiple boys. I need a little bit more diversity in my life. It's one of those things I'm looking for and it's always great for me to make a mental note like here's another author I could check out. And even though none of these stories like stood out or blew me away, I, because I did find all of them competently written, I would totally check out these other authors at a future date and see something else that they're doing that might be within my genre or within a summary that interests me. I'd say it was a success. I've got them all now down on my log to keep an eye out for, and hopefully I'll get a chance to read something else from them later. Last February reading update. So I finished off the Gifted Fae Academy series with The Strong and the Stolen by Brittany Chantanel. And I have to say, of the three in the series, I liked it the least. There's a big time jump between books one and two and books three, and I think for me, I lost a lot of the characters' motivations, and I missed like some crucial growing up scenes or other explanation scenes that would have helped continue to drive this story forward. So from what I read and what I was seeing, it was still a really good book, it was well constructed, and it was a pretty fitting ending for the series without giving any spoilers. It didn't give me the same joy that the first two books gave me. I didn't get the same uplifted, purity of feeling, just genuine enjoyment that I got in the first two books, even though it wrapped everything up 
at a reasonable closing point. So the next book I read was actually The Deathly Touch by C.C. Solomon. Uh, Deathly Touch was recommended to me. Um, one of the great things about this challenge is now that I've been reading enough black authors for Amazon to start tracking things, they're actually starting to recommend in my feed black authors. And I have a couple other new books on my list going forward for this coming year. So that's actually been pretty exciting and a huge success. But Deathly Touch in specific is like a post-apocalyptic book about a girl whose power who has magical powers, she suddenly got them when she was very young, during like the day the world ended and everyone started to know about magic. And her power is that when she touches living things, whether that's plants or animals or people, she kills them. And because of that she's pretty ostracized from her society, they sort of reluctantly accept her because her sister has the power to heal and people in the society need their sis need her sister's power. And she meets a vampire who is immune to her deathly touch, and the two of them sort of develop a sweet romance from there. And other things ensue as well, but I don't want to give too much away. And it was a really great book. I loved it. The writing style was really good. The whole premise of magic became known to humans, and it destroyed everything they knew, and they had to sort of restart. It was great. So. Overall, I would totally recommend this book. I just thought everything about it was really sweet. The other thing I really enjoyed about this book is that it was an excellent young adult romance. A lot of times with young adult romances, I'm sort of like iffy on whether or not I like what's going on, like whether or not consent is happening and is being modeled in a way that I appreciate, whether or not the relationships are mature enough or not mature enough whether or not we're entertaining just like a fantasy young adults have or we're actually trying to show some kind of loving relation. You know, it's just, it's very muddled and because we're talking about a young adult audience, I'm concerned. Like with adult romances, if things are kind of iffy or unsavory, I let a lot of that go because it's adult literature and they can explore anything they want among consenting adults. But when we're talking about young adult books, a lot of times I have more questions or concerns just because young adults are easily influenced. They're still sort of navigating those things. They're looking to, of course, people in their life, but also things that they're seeing in movies and literature. They're like absorbing it and internalizing it. Not all of it and not every teen and young adult. But a lot of them are, and I would just want to make sure that stories are told in a way that show different kinds of love and relationships, but also show things that are healthy or admirable, and if something that is unhealthy or not admirable, it's portrayed in that way. It's not just uh, something we overlook. So definitely touch for me the way the romance is paced, how that romance ends up, I found all of that really empowering and wonderful for young adults. I would definitely recommend this for younger audiences. And the last book I read was Mystic Realms by C.C. Solomon. I found this book before I found Deathly Touch, and it was novella length, so even though it's 2.5 in a series, I thought I would read it because at that point I thought novella length. And since it was already on my Kindle Unlimited, I still finished February reading that one. Might have been better if I had read it within the context of the series. It was enough that I understood what was going on in the series pretty, pretty easily. I understood what was happening, where we were in the story. I understood the basic motivations of all the characters. None of that was a problem. I think the problem for me was that I wasn't very connected to any of the characters. I wasn't very invested. I didn't care that much. And it just wasn't enough time for C.C. Solomon to make me care. Um, based off of the experience, I would go back and actually read the beginning of the series, come back into Mystic Realms, and maybe that would give me more context or more interest going forward. The series is set in the same universe as Deathly Touch, so I liked that whole post-apocalyptic world. I liked all the different magical creatures, all the different kinds of magic, how we're still discovering that and figuring that out, like regular humans are still discovering and figuring that out, but also how we're starting to implement magical creatures into the into our world and where they come from, what they've been doing all this time, all that stuff is cool and fun. And just like some great world building and backstory information going on. The other thing I liked about Mystic Realms is that it was a story about fae and fairy creatures or fae and fairy beings. And I'm always looking for another fae story. It held true to a lot of the 
fae mythology that exists in our world, so I enjoyed that, that there's like a strong basis of folklore and fantasy in it. And overall, you know, I came away from this experience with some new authors that I'm following. I've got a bunch of new recommendations in my Amazon feed so I can keep recommending and reading black authors. So I'm excited about that. Um, other than that, I also found out that it's like, in the beginning, a little bit difficult to search for black authors. And part of that is just like, I wasn't used to it and I'm not very good at search, the search engine in Amazon. And, you know, another part of it is that I'm always looking specifically for Kindle Unlimited reads, so that always narrows your scope down. And a third part of that was I came across a lot of books that were in African American slash black literature and had black people on the cover and had summaries. And then I went to go look at the author page and found out that the author was white. And... I wouldn't say that I would never read a book about black characters by a white author, but that wasn't the goal of this month. And it was really frustrating that it was in African American literature, for me anyways. I'm sure it's frustrating for other people too. It did feel a little disingenuous for them to be in African American literature, and I don't know what the solution is that for, or if those people belong there or not. That's like a whole different conversation I'm not ready to have, because I haven't done the research on it. What I do know was especially when the I went to the author's page and there was no picture of the author and then I had to go look them up further to find out who they were and you know like on their home website there's a huge picture of them there's just no picture of them on Amazon and on Goodreads then I start to feel like it was an intentional thing on their part because they knew that plenty of people would check their Goodreads profile and would check their Amazon profile and put no picture there but if you are interested enough that you go to their website, you can see like a big picture of them front and center. And I just felt it was a little dishonest. Um, just my opinion though. But overall, I think this was a good experience. It was great listening to other people, following their read-alongs, um, intentionally making a point of going and checking out stories that aren't usually recommended to me and making it so that in the future, those kind of authors will be recommended to me. Because the stories are great, they're really well written, there's no difference between them and a white author, except that I was only being suggested other white authors. So I hope that this, I hope this blog gives you some suggestions on what else you could read by black authors. Maybe it'll give some other people some starting points in the fantasy genre or the fantasy romance genre. And I hope it inspires some people to look at their reading history and see if they are reading diversely. And if they're not reading, diversely, just to question like, why is that? Is it because I'm not putting in any work to do that? Is it because I don't want to? Like, why? And what can I do to change if I do want to read more diverse authors? And just to know that even though it's a little bit of work up front, once you get started, it's very easy. So thanks for following me on this blog journey. Uh, if you like this kind of content, let me know. This is a new experiment for me just to do these sort of off-the-cuff random check-ins with my books. If you want to see more of it, you know, go ahead, comment below, let me know, leave me a like. And um, other than that, I'll see you guys next week. Thanks, bye!